lecture 13 is the final lecture of this lecture series. Lecture 13 deals with the case where the fluid is the gas and the particles are mass transfer substances such as liquid droplets. When calculating fluids with heat and mass transfer, the thermal energy equation must be solved simultaneously with the equation continuity and Navier-Stokes equation. Lecture 13 described the energy equation of such flows. The formulation of the flow with heat and mass transfer is quite complicated. So in this lecture, the flow is treated one dimensionally for simplicity. <clears throat> First, consider a flow with a constant cross section as shown in the figure. The area between the section one and the section two is the control volume. From now, the control volume is called CV. Let's consider the inflow and outflow of various physical quantities in CV. Pressure P1 and P2 act on the cross sections one and two. Physical quantities that flow in from the cross-section one and flow out from the cross-section two at gas velocity U1 and U2 and heat flux QF dot one and QF dot two. The heat flux is the, the amount of heat across the cross-section per unit time per unit area. <clears throat> this dot uh, sign always means the value per unit of time of all other quantities in this lecture. <clears throat> Fiction works on the wall surface. Heat transfer also occurred between the gas and the wall. In addition, heat and mass transfer also occurred between particle and gas. Note the definition of gas velocity and temperature in lecture 13. Gap velocity and temperature are phase volume averages. The analysis of this lecture is one dimensional and phase volume average of velocity and temperature are the means averaged by the volume of the gas phase in CV. The weighting function is used for the definition of average of average in lecture 10 and 11, but that function is not used in lecture 13. From now, uh, let's think about the energy of gas. The energy of gas is the sum of the internal energy corresponding to the thermal energy and kinetic energy. The internal energy has been described in detail in lecture 12. The internal energy, small e, can be expressed by the first equation. Np is the mass of one molecule and vi is the velocity of each molecule. N is the number of molecule. As you can see from this equation, the internal energy is the sum of the kinetic energy of individual uh, molecules. If n is U, uh, equal to the Avogadro's number, small e is the internal energy of one mole molecule. But engineering problems are usually discussed on the kilogram basis rather than the molar basis. So the following analysis is analysis based on kilogram. Consider the internal energy of an m kilogram gas. When m is the number of molecules contained in the gas of m kilogram, the mass of one molecule can be expressed as m by n. <clears throat> we 
when MP expressed by N over N is substituted into the first expression and symbol of large N is moved inside the summation symbol sigma, the term following sigma becomes the average of square velocity. This average is expressed by the angle bracket. Half of the average square velocity is represented by the symbol IF as shown in the yellow frame. IF is the internal energy per unit mass of gas. So the internal energy E of m kilogram is m times IF. The internal energy and the kinetic energy per unit volume are shown in the two red line frames <clears throat> as shown in equation one. The phase average total energy, large E, is given by the sum of the internal energy and kinetic energy multiplied by gas volume fraction alpha F. The volume fraction is defined and explained in detail in lecture 10 and 11. <clears throat> The last slide describes the internal energy and kinetic energy of the gas in the mainstream. <clears throat> when mass transfer occurs from particles to gas, the vapor leaving the particles diffuses into the gas. And the internal energy and kinetic energy are released from the moving substances the amount of energy released from substances per unit time is given by equation two. <clears throat> when discussing the total energy based on the first law of thermodynamics, it is necessary to take into account the energy expressed by equation two. Note the sign here. The first law of thermodynamics is applied to the gas. Mk dot is the mass change of the particle K. In the case of evaporation, Mk dot is negative, but when viewed from the gas side, the mass of the gas will increase. Next, consider the work due to the mass flux from the particle surface. <clears throat> the evaporating particles have the form of vapor. Vapor flowing out of the particle particles provide not only the thermal energy, but also give the work of PS timed delta V. PS is the pressure on the particle surface and Delta V is the volume to be extruded. The gas in the mainstream takes this work from particles. Work due to mass flux from all particles is expressed as the summation of individual work. Arranging the equation, the work by mass transport transfer can be expressed finally as equation three. <clears throat> In the case of evaporation, the gas takes a work given by particles. Therefore, WM dot is negative. <clears throat> Detailed description of mass transfer is given in equation four, in, in lecture four. <clears throat> now we are ready to derive the energy equation. <clears throat> first, <clears throat> the first law of thermodynamics is shown on the 
first line, the first law of thermodynamics is that time change in total energy d e d t of the gas is equal to the amount of supplied heat q dot minus the work w dot that the gas gives per unit time. As you can see from the figure, the difference between the energy flowing in and out of the CV is expressed by the equation on the second line. The amount of change in energy per unit time is written as round E round T times V. Using the result of second line, the DE DT of the first line becomes the expression shown in the third line. <clears throat> Substituting the equation on the third line into the equation on the first line, the first law of thermodynamics becomes the equation on the fourth line. Equation one of energy E per unit volume is shown again. <clears throat> Substituting E of equation one into the equation on the fourth line, the energy equation can be expressed, expressed by equation four. The first term on the left hand side is the rate of energy accumulation. The second term is the energy flux across the section. Q dot in the right hand side is the inflow or outflow of heat. Q dot is positive in the case of inflow and negative in the case of outflow. W dot is the work if the fluid gives the, give the outside the work, W dot is positive. If the fluid is given the work by the outside, W dot is negative. Next slide shows concrete expression for Q dot and W dot. <clears throat> Let's examine terms of Q dot. First, you see QE dot. The QE dot is the internal energy and the kinetic energy released from particles due to mass transfer. <clears throat> a minus sign is attached to the right hand side. In the case of evaporation, the MK dot is negative and so it is positive on the gas side. Next, the term QF dot. QF dot is the difference between the inflow and outflow of heat transfer across the section. The next is the QW dot. This is the amount of heat transferred from the gas to the wall. So a minus sign is attached. If the gas temperature is lower than the wall temperature, the gas gains heat from the wall. The small QW dot is the heat flux. That is, the small QW dot is the heat transfer per unit time per unit area. The small QW dot is given by the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the temperature difference between gas and wall. LP is some comfort the conference, so LP times delta X is the area of the wall on the wall surface surrounding the flow path. <clears throat> the first term QP dot is the amount of heat transfer from part of the gas. As in the case of QW dot, this term is also given by the heat transfer coefficient and temperature difference Detailed analysis have been made concerning this heat transfer in lecture four. The result obtained in lecture four is shown in this slide.
there are various works that the guest gives and guest takes. <clears throat> First, I will show the work due to the pressure difference. Next, I will show the work due to mass flux from particle surface. I have explained this work in the previous slide. The next is the work due to the change in particle volume. This work is extremely small and so it can be ignored. The next is the work due to the drug force on the particles. See lecture three for expression related to this force. The last is the work due to body force such as the force caused by gravity. In this lecture so far, I'm using the word work, but strictly speaking, it is power. That is work per unit time, but I continue to use the word work for power. <clears throat> The energy equation can be derived by the first law of thermodynamics shown on the first line. <clears throat> Substituting the Q dot and W dot in the previous slide into the above equation, the one dimensional energy equation can be written as equation five. Four Q dot times due to various heat transfer as shown from the second to the third line. The fourth line shows the six W dot terms. The first term on the right hand side of equation five is QE dot. QE dot is internal energy and kinetic energy released for the particle due to the mass transfer such an evaporation. The first term QF dot on the third line is the difference of heat transfer and uh, heat flux due to conduction. The second term QW dot is the heat transfer between the wall and the gas. The third one QP dot is the heat transfer between particles and gas. The first term and the second term WP dot on the first line uh, the work due to pressure difference. The third term QM dot is the work due to mass flux from particle surface. See equation three. The fourth and the fifth term W dot are the work due to drug force on the particles. The last term QG dot is the work due to body force such as gravitational force. Using entropy, simplify the form of other equation. Let's combine, combine the second term on left hand side of equation five and first term on the fourth line as indicated by the red curve. The internal, internal energy IF plus P by law F is enthalpy. If we use this relation, the combined expression becomes a little simplified expression as shown in the yellow frame. The first term QE dot on the right hand side of equation five and the third term WM dot on the first line can also be combined as shown by the green curves. HS is the enthalpy of the gas on the surface surrounding the particles. MK dot is the change in, in mass of particle K. For evaporation, MK dot is negative and particle reduce, reduced mass. But when viewed from the gas side, the gas mass increases with evaporation. 
that is mass source is positive. <coughs> We further transform the equation on the last slide. Let's assume that all particles have the same velocity and the same temperature. Then the last expression in the last slide can be rewritten as the first equation in this slide. That is the, the summation symbol sigma and mk dot can be replaced with the mass source term S mass. As mentioned at the end of this the previous slide, the mass source term S mass is positive when mk dot is negative. So the minus sign is removed in the expression using S mass. I have described S mass in the lecture 10 in detail. <clears throat> The energy equation reached in the last slide is shown from the second to fourth line. If we divide the first term on the first line into the derivative of P and derivative of alpha P V, it becomes the equation on the fifth line below the blue straight line. <coughs> The first term on the right hand side of equation five line cancels out with the last term on the fourth line as shown by the red diagonal line. We will modify the expression of heat transfer between particle gas in the third line first. Let's replace the number of particle NP with alpha PV over Vp, where alpha p is particle volume fraction, Vp is the volume of one particle and V is the volume of Cv. <clears throat> Further, <coughs> expressing the particle volume Vp as pi by six times d cubed, the expression of the particle fluid heat transfer finally becomes the equation on the seventh line. Considering the above, if you rewrite the right hand side of the energy equation, it is expressed from the eighth to ninth line. <clears throat> The expression of the left and right hand side shown in the last slide are combined and shown as the total energy equation. <clears throat> the total energy equation per unit volume is obtained by dividing the entire equation by the volume V. The result equation shown in the yellow frame as equation six. The source term light S mass is replaced with V small s mass and V delta X is replaced with V over A. Now the derivation of total energy equation is complete. The derivation of thermal energy can be done by removing the contribution of kinetic energy from the total energy equation. However, please note that it is not just the removal of the term u squared from equation six. The matter is not so simple. We need the one dimensional equation motion to remove kinetic energy from the total energy. From the next slide, I will derive the one dimensional equation of motion for that purpose. The equation of motion will be derived in the same way as the total energy equation. Pressure P acts on the cross section one and P plus delta P acts on the cross section two. 
gas flows in uh, from the second one at velocity one and uh, flows out from the second two at the velocity u two. <clears throat> friction works on the wall surface. Consider the mass transfer that occurs between particle and gas. <clears throat> the equation of motion can be derived by the following relation. The rate of momentum accumulation in CV equal, is equal to momentum flux across the section plus momentum released from particles plus force acting on fluid. The momentum in CV is represented by the symbol B. B is given as rho F alpha F U. From now on, the above four terms enclosed in rectangular frames will be given one by one. <clears throat> rate of momentum uh, momentum accumulation is v times round v over round t momentum flux across a section is minus v times round v u round t according assume that mass and the velocity of all particles are same the momentum released from the particle is the mass source time times particle velocity v. <clears throat> By substituting the above equation into the relation of rectangular frames, it becomes the last equation. Large f is the force acting on fluid. It, I will show the expression of F concretely in the next slides. From now, the concrete expression for the forces are given. <clears throat> the pressure force is the force due to the pressure difference. A is the cross-sectional area. A times delta x is the volume V of CV. The wall friction can be expressed by multiplying the wall shear stress by the area of inner surface of the flow pass. Gravitational force is the gas mass, gas mass multiplied the gravitational constant G. <clears throat> I have expressed, explained the reaction force to the fluid drug in lecture four. The second term in the curly bracket is the force acting on the particles due to the pressure gradient, which is also explained in lecture four. By substituting the above forces into the last equation on the last side, the equation motion is complete. Uh, the second term on the right, uh, second term on the right hand side of the equation motion is expression obtained as a result combining the term of two pressure gradient into one, as shown by the red circle and the red lines. Equation seven can be obtained by eliminating the volume V over all the terms. Large S mass is replaced with small S mass. Equation seven is used to subtract the kinetic energy from the total energy equation. <clears throat> from here, the transform transformation to eliminate the kinetic energy from the total energy equation is described. To eliminate the kinetic energy from the total energy, equation seven multiplied by U is subtracted from equation six. First, equation seven multiplied by U is shown 
on the first line, <clears throat> transforming the first time on left hand side of the first rhyme, it become the last expression on the third rhyme as shown in the red rhyme playing. Transforming the second term on the left hand side of the first line, it become the equation on the fifth line. <clears throat> Transforming the two terms in the blue frame on the second line, on the fifth line, lead to the final expression on the seventh line. <clears throat> The first term and second term of the left hand side of the equation motion multiply the U as shown on the first and the second line again. <clears throat> the left hand side of the equation motion multiplied by U is shown on the third line. <clears throat> the term the term in the query bracket of third line is mass source term per unit volume. Concerning this, refer to the last slide of lecture 11. <clears throat> the equation motion multiplied u is given by equation eight and shown in the fourth line. <clears throat> To begin with, to begin with, the total energy equation six equation six is shown. Next, the equation motion multiplied by u is shown. <clears throat> Subtracting equation eight from equation six, you obtain equation nine. If the flow is assumed a pipe flow, LP by A is equal to two by R, where R is the radius. <clears throat> equation nine is called thermal energy equation. Various terms are shown in equation nine beside the internal energy EIF, enthalpy HF, and HS. I will show such term in the next slide. <clears throat> Equation nine, which has been derived in the last slide is shown again. Each term is explained from now. First, the internal energy IF in the first term on the left hand side can be replaced with CV times gas temperature TF. CV is the constant volume specific heat. The enthalpy in the second term can be replaced, replaced with CP times gas temperature. CP is constant pressure specific heat, specific heat. The enthalpy HS of the steam on the right hand side can be replaced with CPS times steam temperature TS. CPS is the constant pressure specific heat of steam. How W and QW dot on the right hand side can be given by the friction coefficient CF and heat transfer coefficient H. But the formulas of CF and H are not shown here. If you want to know such formulas, refer to standard technical books on fluid engineering and heat transfer. <clears throat> I have already shown beta V and beta T related to the term of free drying and heat transfer between particle and gas. See 
slide number 16 for beta v and slide number 9 by 16 for beta t. <coughs> Round QF dot round X correspond to the difference between the heat flowing, flowing in and out of the CV. It can be given by multiplying the gradient of free temperature, gas temperature by the thermal conductivity. Pregnant analysis of the energy equation is based on one dimensional treatment. The actual phenomenon is three-dimensional. If you want to, if you if you try to do detailed calculation of particle gas temperature and uh, multiphase flow with heat and mass transfer, please use this lecture video as a preparation before starting full-scale study. This is the end of all lectures. Thank you.